Over the last few months, the Labour Party has begun selecting candidates for the next general election. That's likely to come in 2024, but given events over the last month, it could be even sooner. It's been a tough time for the party's left, with the selection of Faiza Shaheen as the party's candidate in Chingford a rare win. Elsewhere, many candidates have been blocked from even getting on the long list, let alone being voted on by local party members. One candidate who knows what that feels like is Maurice McLeod, a councillor in South London who was blocked from making the long list in Camberwell and Peckham. And I'm joined by Maurice now. Maurice, explain to our audience the process of seeking to become a Labour candidate and how precisely you were blocked. Once uh, a seat becomes open, if you're a member and you're uh, you know, of good standing or whatever, you can put your name in for that seat. There's a sort of application process that gets looked through. And I assume they make sure that, you know, you're at least ticking uh, the boxes. Then it gets to a bit where they're going to go and decide the long list. But first you sort of run around trying to get endorsements and showing people who you are and hoping that you can get people to say, yeah, this is a good candidate. I happen to get um, uh, Unite and Aslef and, and a sort of string of mainly left-wing MPs, but also anti-racist sort of activists and journalists and, and you know, I, I had a good spread. Your social media, your, your Google, everything's trawled through to make sure that you're fit to be an MP, that you haven't done or said anything crazy that's going to sort of really shame the party. That's the bit that I've got stopped at. And, and I think it's kind of important to say that, that, I, that I was probably um, a little bit naively confident because absolutely I'm on the left and I'm very vocally on the left and, you know, I do the picket lines and I, you know, people know that and I've never hidden that. I'm also, um, you know, a lifelong anti-racist campaigner and until a couple of weeks ago, I was running one of the nation's national anti-racism charities in Race on the Agenda. I have been a journalist for 30 years. You know, I was political editor from The Voice nearly 30 years ago. Um, I, um, been a councillor for two terms recently, uh, re-elected in Wandsworth, uh, you know, where we took the council for the first time from the Tories in 44 years. And so I kind of thought, maybe a little bit naively, that the party would go, oh, OK, yeah, he's on the left, but he's a reasonable person. You know, he's, an, he's a proper upstanding person and there's nothing uh, uh, untoward about him. Not least because I've been through four selection processes, twice as a councillor once to, uh, for a GLA seat and once for the parliamentary seat for Vauxhall, where I was, where I was long-listed. I kind of avoided getting into the detail of what the four things are. They're, they're so minuscule. That I, you know, I, w- I will happily talk about them, but I kind of think it's not the point. The point is I wasn't blocked because of those. I was blocked because I'm a left-winger and there's a worry that someone's going to be troublesome or is going to be difficult. If they're too left-wing, it's, it's a... It's a absolute effort by the party to make sure that a seat like Campbell and Peckham, one of the safest seat, safest Labour seats in the country with the biggest black populations, they want to make sure that that doesn't fall into the hands of someone who might, you know, get them to try and be a bit transformative. So just to be clear, one of the reasons why you, um, you were blocked is because you like to tweet by the Green Party, is that correct? That's one of them. Like I say, I almost think it's a distraction talking about the actual reasons that they gave because, yeah, a, a tweet by a Green Party um, person who I, that I then uh, took down when I was told to, a dispute between sort of uh, bits of the t- uh, Labour administration in Tottenham and I sided with the council tenants and was a little bit critical of the council. Both of those things, by the way, were before I was a councillor, so I was... A political journalist, I was talking about politics, it was literally doing my job. And another thing where I sort of, there's a statement from me as a journalist, again, where I state, uh, I give a, a, a comment on a controversial issue. The line I give is exactly Labour's line, was exactly Labour's line at that time. So, um, and, and the, the fourth thing is, uh, there was a Tory smear um, when I was quite a new councillor. It went nowhere. It ended up in no papers. I was, you know, there was no issue with me and my whip or anything like that. They do not want socialists. Uh, they want they want to get they want to have as few socialists as possible to be in the Labour Party. I would argue. People look at the very low caliber of politicians in this country, and then people are being blocked on the basis that they've liked to tweet by, you know, the Green Party. I think most people think, well, it's not really that su- surprising when we have people completely incapable of actually solving problems. I mean, the Labour Party likes to pitch itself as 
you know, the party of diversity, inclusion, anti-racism. Do you think that all kind of rings hollow in so much as, yes, they're willing to embrace black and brown candidates, but only as long as they agree with the party line on certain issues? And if you don't, well, fundamentally, you're irrelevant. I think this is one of the challenges with uh, even how we think about diversity. You know, the, the Tory cabinet is very diverse, therefore... You know, and what's the impact on race equality going to be? Very little. So it's not just the race thing, I don't think. I think it's more, I think it's more of a socialist thing. I'm not sure that they are really comfortable with anyone that's actively calling for change. I think that feels all too radical. It's a bit too, um, you know, we are a party of government. We're not really in vogue, basically. Um, and I think it's because of the fear that we, as in left wingers and people that, are active on picket lines and people that do turn up for demonstrations when black boys are shot in the street, you know, those sorts of uh, lunatics, we um, are seen as trouble um, instead of, this is what I guess the bit that makes me sad, instead of the party going brilliant, you know, this, you know, this is really connecting us to communities that, that maybe we struggle to connect to and let's be a broad church and can totally see why there's a space for, for left-wing anti-racist views, but I feel, I fear, I should say, that, that the party is scared of, of those voices. It makes, me, it makes me sad, to be honest, yeah. It's important to say that Maurice isn't alone in being blocked. Another victim of an internal stitch-up is Emma Dent Code, who won the seat of Kensington for Labour for the very first time in 2017. She posted a statement to Twitter shortly after the news broke of her being blocked. And it's the third paragraph which gets right to the heart of the issue. Dent Code writing this. If I have been outspoken in my politics, it is due to my passion and care for Kensington, for my neighbours and friends, and because of my burning desire to stamp out injustice and build a fairer, more equal society. Upsettingly, unaccountable Labour officials have exploited this outspokenness to unjustly prevent me from standing for the seat I won just five years ago. The seat I came agonizingly close to holding even in 2019, despite the trade union backing which should have seen me long listed automatically. It is as plain as day that the candidate selection process now being run by the party is being factionally abused and is not fit for purpose. According to Labour List, the decision to block Dent Code was made on the basis of, quote, concerns about her past social media activity, although precisely what activity isn't made clear. It rarely is. Given the low calibre of Britain's politicians, let's hope the media starts to care a little bit more about how Labour selects its candidates. Banning people for liking tweets is clearly absurd. No wonder we're in such an utter mess as a country. Mm -hmm.